There's been a change nationally in the philosophy of transfusion. And ASH, for instance, last year issued their Choosing Wisely guidelines. And their first guideline was transfuse only as little as you need to to maintain an acceptable hemoglobin, seven to nine grams, to help to minimize symptoms or overcome symptoms of anemia. And I perceive that there has been pushback about transfusing patients nationally. In some ways, that's an application of intensive care or critical surgery, uh, randomized studies on, on how to run a, a hemoglobin when to transfuse to an outpatient ambulatory population that hasn't been validated. My, that's my opinion, not, not a fact. But, but I wondered what you thought about that, about the evolving role of transfusion and about the national trend in transfusion and, and how that influences your practice. Yes. Um, so two points here. One is the European guideline, actually, is that individuals over the age of 70 with lower risk MDS must have a hemoglobin of 10 grams to maintain their quality of life. So their guidelines are far more relaxed than ours, um, and that's something to be followed. Second is that for me, there's only one indication for transfusion, which is the level that patient tolerates. If they become symptomatic at nine grams, then I'm going to uh, transfuse them at nine grams. Another patient can tolerate down to seven grams quite well without a disturbance in their daily function. And we have the conversation that, look, maybe bringing it to nine grams will help. We bring it to nine grams makes no difference. Then I know. So I think, once again, it is very, very uh, individual dependent. And you need to work with the patient to develop a wise attitude towards transfusion. And I like this guideline that you try to maintain it in a reasonable level. Don't yeah. let it fall below seven. But you don't have to push everybody to have over 10 grams. No, it's more restrictive than it needs to be. It's somewhat arbitrary at times over the last few years. And I understand the impetus for that, but I think it needs to be applied to the person. And I, I think that can be incorporated into something where the practices are set up to monitor the frequency or burden of transfusions over time, the ferritin over time, and also the response to transfusions, the yes. symptom burden over time, to determine where that person should run. And that, that, that is something we all do intuitively as we treat patients, but maybe ought to be doing more systematically uh, to help monitor this issue, because it is the greatest uh, cytopenia, or the most important cytopenia in the disease. One well, thing I yeah. want to say that occasionally what happens is, uh, James, I'll have a patient who's very nervous because he says, Dr. Raza, every time I've gotten a transfusion, my hemoglobin's gone up to nine by two grams. This time I got a transfusion, it only went up by a gram, and within a week I'm back for another transfusion. Is, am I dying? Is my disease progressing? And many times I have to calm them down by saying, no, it's not your disease. It's the donor whose blood you received. It isn't that every single time you're going to get a transfusion, it will be from a donor that is equally compatible with your blood. Occasionally, we will have a donor whose cells will die more rapidly in your body. So many times, these kinds of changes are not at all related to the disease, but related to the donor. Of course, we have to be vigilant about if there is a consistent fall or increase in transfusion that's not going away with multiple transfusions, then we need to rework their, restage their disease at that point. But I just wanted to say it because don't get excited about one or two transfusions looking very odd and suggesting disease progression, that it may be just from. I'm glad you said that. That's, that actually, that happens in our practice also where somebody, they track their numbers so closely if it doesn't fit exactly into how it's been, they start to panic. and. Anytime I see a, a change in the anemia, a change in the transfusion burden, it seems obvious, but we stop and say, is somebody bleeding? Have their platelet count dropped? Is there some other contributing cause? Because it's not always the disease. 